in Vegas, no one cares if you're a celebrity, no one cares if you're the president, no one cares nothing. They care about making money. So for them, the most important things are the high rollers. Right? Yeah, well, it's well, like, you didn't come to a competition to have, oh, let's all go home, everyone's a winner. We lost two, two grand. You guys trying to help us win that back or no? We played on camera the other day. My whole Bakrat session, we put on camera. It's on film. I wanted to see what's going on because I still believe like, yo, you can't win. All right, I'm kind of in a shitty mood and we're sitting across from possibly the exact polar opposites of you and I. Correct. We're down probably like two grand from last night. Which is pennies. Which is pennies to them. Correct. Let me introduce these legends. We have Mickey Mace. He's back. Mickey. And Mickey brought a friend. Happy to be back, by the way. I'm so super stoked. We love having you back. And I know you're not lying because you're sober. Yeah. No, I mean it. You're just telling the truth. All right. And then you brought your friend here. Can you introduce him? Yeah. So this is Sean Perry. So this is my boy a long time, right? Okay, so he's a, um, a sports sharp, right? He's an actual winning sports better. And like everybody you see online, they're always screaming in the camera, like, lack of the day, buy my picks. All fraud, all fake. And I talk about it in every interview. Any chance I get, I talk about how they're all fake and don't buy their like picks. Like when Drake posts his little steak shit? Nah, not like that. But like there's all these dudes that are always like saying like, I'm the sports betting goat, buy my picks, you're guaranteed to win. You're not guaranteed to win. They're all losers. They're all liars. Like I actually have sat in the room and watched them pick what they're selling as their pick of the lock. They literally don't care. They just want your money. And they're to, to How get do they their get your money? money? So they're like, pay me, you know, X amount of dollars and I'll feed you the winning sports bets of the day. But none of them are winning. They're all liars. All of them on the internet. I know Sean a long time, way before the internet. He's actually a winning sports better. He's a seven figure a day better. He can't bet himself, so he bets like through aggregates, like other people. Like so, that's what his whole like living consists. So he has runners basically. Wait, wait, wait. That do exactly. It. Why that. can't he? Be- wait, well, <laughs> Sean. Yeah, I'm Sean. Hi, For Sean. Uh, let's hear but, straight uh, from you. Why can't you bet yourself? I'm basically up a lot in gambling, and so as casinos, you know, they don't want to lose money. The casinos are here; it's a business for them. They only want people to gamble against them that are going to lose, and um, so if they realize you're winning in sports. Uh, they're going to cut you off. Or some casinos, what they do is they'll limit you and make your limits really small. And then when you go bet, they'll just move the line a bunch. And then if you're actually someone that bets a lot, you can never bet there because then you can't get down a bunch of money. Do they do this on an individual basis per person like that? Yeah, 100%. like they. So that's, how is that allowed? Happened to me too. You can't do it in any other business. I can't be like, that item's on sale for you, but fuck you, that item's full price for you if I yeah, go to Target. Is. Yeah, but, it is. You do discount codes all the time, but they have to up. qualify. <laughs> <laughs> but you see, but it's, they're trying to, they're dictating their, you know, what they want to happen. And obviously guys like that will figure out a system and slide underneath. To okay, let me, I understand how you make money mm-hmm. because you make money essentially card games. Right. I understand how logic prevails sometimes in that there is some sort of edge. I understand that. Which I don't understand, by the way. Well, I just get that it's numbers. I know how to count. I'm like, okay. It's a hidden thing. What what Mickey's doing, for instance. Like, so there's basically four things in a casino you can make money in. One is poker because the casino just takes money of every single pot. Right, so they're guaranteed to make money, and then you play against other people, and you can take money. The casino and poker doesn't exactly. care who wins, who loses. So they don't care at all. So you yeah. can make money playing poker. Is that the best way to make money? It depends on what your environment is, what your situation is. Like pokers could be very. They all four of these can be very, very profitable. So one is poker. Another one is blackjack. If you're a winning blackjack player, within ten minutes, the casino is going to come down and be like, "Hey, I'm sorry, we're going <coughs> to flat bet you," meaning like you can't change your increment sizings of what you're allowed to bet. And then if you're still winning while flat betting, they're going to completely ban you from playing blackjack. Another way to beat a casino in gambling is on progressive slot machines. So what progressive slot machines are, they start at like a jackpot, say 75000 right? But as people put money in and no one hits a jackpot, every dollar gets put in the jackpot goes higher and higher and higher. So the jackpot could get to 500000 and now each click of the button, it becomes profitable. So if you wait till the uh, jackpot gets to a certain limit, you're gonna end up making money in expected value each press. And there are they're called slot hustlers. There's yeah. guys full time for a living. They have a system. You ever seen the dude that that is on one of those like uh, you know the disabled machines that he's riding around and he's putting bets around the, the yeah, slots? Yeah, yeah. Is he's just riding around? Course? No, it's not it, you're just course. like you're they, just no, betting. No slot house slot slot slot, <laughs> slot hustlers have a system and they found a way to calculate like what he's saying when it hits the threshold of when it will become profitable. So they're always with the slot hustlers, the real guys, the pros. They know when it's in a machine when it's in that certain range. So they're like within X amount roughly spins. I'm guaranteed 
guaranteed this jackpot. Yeah, but so you're telling me if the jackpot's at 130 grand, he goes, all right, as long as I blow 120 to make 10, I'm good? N- well, well, basically the idea is- much like, simpler like, as far as dollars go. Like he could be like, I can, for the next 10 spins at $100 a spin, I'm guar- almost guaranteed one of these 10 spins is going to hit the jackpot. That really? It could be with that yeah. kind of range. I thought you have to be like, all right, it's 130. I'll invest 100 grand into this machine and hopefully I win 30. But you're telling me- they can pull it off within 10 spins. Yeah, there's really sharp guys That's out there. fucking nuts. That is crazy. Yeah. And D-Lucky's not one of them, just to be clear. Do you guys don't know D-Lucky? No. I'll just put him on blast. I don't really care. Uh, uh, D-Lucky's please. this dude. He goes around. He, go, he always goes, just like that. And he never shows his face. His whole video is him hitting a slot for a fan, winning some kind of small jackpot, and saying, just like that. And then he sells you this false idea that he's an actual slot hustler. So he has his marketing is berserk like it's crazy so all these people believe it right it's rammed down their throats and most people who play slots are like midwestern you know not in the social media hype don't know what to look for so they just believe it he's got lines out the door of people that'll pay him i forget the rate is like uh like 500 bucks an hour or something like that and you have to bring an addition that's his fee then you have to bring your own money to gamble and he has so many people lined out the door to do it that he only that he films all of them and he only posts the winners and uses that and he just pumps marking behind those clips. So he just catches all the naive people that are not around that are not sharp enough. Yeah, to. but there's a lot of those people. So how does he? What's the slogan? Just like that, right? Yeah, That's he's like this gay Asian dude. He goes just like that. <laughs> I got yeah. you. That's and he went viral on the internet. It's super. Viral. I feel like if I was like down on my luck enough, I would probably give him money. Well, everyone's looking for the the get rich quick story, right? And so yeah. many people are. F- selling the get rich quick story. And so the one of the easiest ways, obviously through gambling. And they said that this is, and and this is the only addiction that could make you money. Well, so sports betting. So except yeah, yeah. sex, (laughs) (laughs) but essentially drinking bleeds you dry. Gambling could actually, well, Mickey and I have been, yeah, doing this for a long time. How long have you been doing this for? I come from a gambling background. Like I grew up around it. My dad was one of the biggest poker players in the world. What was his name? Ralph Perry. He was playing like, all the super high stakes games in like Bobby's room and like table <coughs> one inside Ari and things like that. So like I grew up like in this environment, my grandma was a professional poker player. Really? Um, he my, was, yeah. he was ranked number three poker player in the world in 2021. Yeah. So, so basically nuts. I grew up, everyone that knew me growing up knew I was going to be a professional gambler. Like my bar missile was poker themed, right? Like I eat, sleep and loved poker sports. Like was an athlete, all these things um, dropped out of school. Cause I was making like, I basically in high school would like come back home for summers or whatever. I was living in San Diego playing basketball and I uh, would come back and make like $30,000 playing poker underage in the casinos. And then like in two weeks and then we'd just like fly to Israel for the summer. Like we're the Jew crew here. So I loved Israel. I've been like over 20 times, by the way. Let's go. But uh, yeah, so I'd like basically go to Israel for summer, come back. Then I was in college. I started some company and it was like going to do really well. I was like in this like school hothouse program and all this stuff. But I like loved gambling and I was also in the ROTC. And they didn't like the fact that I was gambling. And I made like 200000 within like two months playing small stakes poker. And I was like, fuck this. Like, I'm out of here. You know what I mean? I'm going right. to go play some poker. Right. Went straight to Florida where you only had to be 18 plus. I was 19 at the time. Won like $700,000 my first week out of school. Wait. Yeah. It's 18 plus in Florida? Yeah. yeah Indian. Hard Rock. Yeah. Because of Indian Reservation. Only poker though. Yeah. Let me ask you this. Do you have siblings? Yeah. I have a brother. Does he just suck at gambling? Yeah, he sees like my family and me, and he's like, "Oh, I want to be a gambler," and obviously just loses all his money all the time. <laughs> what does he, what I mean? So, so like, what does he do? Is he just a regular uh, job or? Nah, he year? actually uh, he has. So I'm he's the only person in my family history to ever graduate from college. He has uh, a master's program. He started his own solar company. Oh, he's, oh yeah, sick. he's he's doing big things. He's 25, so he just graduated from one year. He bought his own house. Like, what would what whatever. would you do if you sucked at gambling? I don't know, man. I don't have. I just always been good at. I just been making money since I was a kid in this world, kind of thing. I used to hustle my friends in like high school. I mean, I've started companies and stuff, but it's like I could go. The truth is, I could go do anything, right? Honestly, like both Mickey and I, for instance, we're very good with numbers. Like we could go right now to Wall Street, and these guys would pay us probably a million dollars a year starting salary, no experience, anything. Because especially like me, for instance, in the sports world, I'm used to running like Sims and models and all these things, right? right? Like this, it's kind of the same. It's very comparable to trading on the stock market. You know, I did work on Wall Street. You did? I did. Yeah. I'm sure you were a crusher. Yeah, I, I, I did yeah. crush. I did crush. Make sure that this mic is close enough to you. All right, perfect. Like one of my one of my boys that works for me actually used to be a trader on Wall Street. He made his company 800 million his first year working there. 
and uh he just is like kind of autistic in a way and like his boss took credit and he doesn't like like that world and he likes to gamble so like both mickey and i we're doing we're literally living our dreams like this is what we right. love to do and I, I feel like people demonize autism but i feel like it really <laughs> does bring out the best in people you know shane gillis has this skit you know talking about like uh people with uh, special needs from the special olympics right? and he goes they're always happy and all they like is tits and john cena that's, yeah, because they don't have to consume the news. Yeah. They don't know what goes on in the world yeah. besides what John Cena. Right? Yeah. It's such a simple life. If you think about it, you don't got to worry about anything. I feel like, though, you could retire and make your life about tits and John Cena. <laughs> <laughs> the goal in life would to be live a Down syndrome life as close to that as possible. It is mostly catered, um, secure, safe. Everybody around you like wants to always make sure you're comfortable. Right. And you know, you get to just focus on tits and John Cena. You're like, yeah. Yeah, they're real smart. The guy that actually works about me, he's like, uh, so you know about this AI stuff that's happening? Like he's been telling me for years, like he works every single day from wake up to sleep, doesn't spend a dollar because he thinks that AI is going to overtake us in like five years and become like, so basically humans have became the greatest thing in this world because we're the smartest. But now right. something's going to become smarter than us. And there's this like huge world right now of what's happening on the internet. And there's like the Elon Musk and all these people are talking about it saying, yo, there's like a 10% likelihood that in like seven years, like we're just going to become wiped off the earth. Well, we're not going to be as useful, useful anymore. Yeah. Exactly. We're not, we're, how, like, we can't compute the, inform the information that fast. AI spits out essays in 30 seconds. Do they do something? Like, but someone's still got to run a cash register. Not really. You don't no, do self checkout. No. Oh yeah, so I got to run the cash register. <laughs> <laughs> well, money at this point. Right. Money at this point, to be honest, when AI becomes a thing, is like going to be somewhat irrelevant. What, do you what think so? Because the society still needs an upper class to like confuse For judgment. the lower class. You're talking so, about judgment because so, so, there, there, there will never the, be equality but, financially. About the one percent, which means we can erase ninety nine percent of the human population and still oh, please. exist with comfort. That would be great. I, I don't disagree. At COVID all, wasn't record, COVID wasn't strong enough. I would get behind that completely. Too many people. I agree. And I, most of them are idiots. Right. Well, yeah, most people definitely are kind of taking up space. You think most people are dumb? I mean, I feel like we all know the answer to that, right? <laughs> yeah. But uh. <laughs> like when you guys are gambling, like, and you obviously communicate with other people, and do you, do you feel like a lot of it around you is luck? Uh, for some people, and you're like, this guy is just a fucking moron. I can't believe he's gotten this well, far. Or you know, and then there's people who are like, we we know this world. And so this Mickey isn't and I, sheer luck. Right? We play against some of the smart, like for instance, we play poker and how we really got to know each other in these high stakes private games around the world and stuff. Like in LA, we'd play, we're playing with like billionaires and like people that are like considered some of the smartest people in the world. You can't become right? a billionaire like, and be an idiot. 100%. Which is like a, good a list point. celebrities and all these things. Right. And it's just like, just because someone is good at something, right, doesn't mean, or you could be a super genius, doesn't mean they're good at all things, right? right? So like for us, we have this unique skill in the gambling world where we're super elite. So like I'll see someone who's a lawyer with photographic memory, perfect SAT scores, like just you'd think super wizard. And he comes to the poker table with us and we'll just like bash him or we'll play in sports. Like, so one of the ways I've made all my money is like, I literally am gambling at billionaires and sports and stuff. And we're like battling against each other. And it's like an incredible thing that I'm just some college dropout. You know what I mean? That's just here. Like, head bashing these dudes that are like considered the smartest in the world. But you're running the numbers and you're running circles around them. Yeah, exactly. Do I know a, a sick story? This is, I think, two months ago. So he was in a sports betting tournament, right? He gets to the final table, like the final few or whatever. And the the winner gets nine, how much? Nine. It was like 9.3 million. 9.3 yeah. million dollars to the winner, right? And this, this also happens in all tournaments, poker, blackjack, baccarat tournaments, everything. When you usually get to like the final table, the final few, usually you all look at each other and say, do you guys just want to chop? Right. Because like the last place of that group will get, you know, a couple hundred thousand, but the winner gets so much money. They go, why don't we just take the entire final table prize pool and we'll evenly chop and it. And make everybody happy. And make everybody happy. So no matter who wins, who loses, like we all get max for the dollar. So everybody wants to chop in this poker, tour um, this sports betting tournament. The winner gets nine point three million. Everybody wants to chop. They go to him. and He goes, I'm the best in the world. Why would I chop? This really happened two <laughs> months ago. He I agree. Turn down the chop. I agree too. Yeah, because yeah. you got to back. You got to back where business. you're selling, right? Well, basically, what happened is I didn't even like realize it was a big ordeal. This like whole competition you're talking about. So can you like, explain what it was yeah, exactly? I, I'll, I'll tell you the whole story. So what you guys are gambling. At Circa, right? And you can look this up by the way. It's all yes. over the internet. So right. basically, yeah. what happens is one thing that I do is the same way Mickey hustles casinos. I have my own way of hustling casinos in the sports world, right? So what I'll do is I'll go to casinos and I'll gamble in the pits and stuff, like very high. 
and I'll know I'm going to lose money because I'm not winning. I'll go play Baccarat. I don't know how to win in Baccarat. I don't know how to win in like these other games like machines or whatever it is. So the casino thinks I'm like a whale. And then I go to the sports book and be like, hey, I'm your highest level players card here. I'm down a few hundred thousand gambling your pit. Like I want to bet sports, but I like to bet massive. So they'll give me a hundred, few hundred thousand dollar limits separate than they give anyone else, right? And so then I go and then what I'll do is like, I'm so powerful in the sports world that the whole market, I'm able to control it. So I'm able to control where the lines are at, where they can finish at and all these sorts of things because I bet so much money and I have all these, like, it's like stock trading. You just want to basically- Market manipulate. Exactly, I can manipulate the nice. market. So I could go to these casinos and beat them. Is that illegal? No, it's completely illegal. Right. Completely what's, illegal. What's illegal about- Placing a bet that moves the needle, right? Ex essentially, exactly. Right? It's so, just yeah, well, he didn't tell them. It's like move a fat girl jumping into a pool, you right? It's just think, yeah. You also think like this: he didn't call them as like move the needle. He made a bet. They then acted in response to his right. bet and said, "Let's yeah. move the needle." No, but I was doing what I do in the sports books is to in order to like so to win in sports like the w easiest way to know that someone's winning is if you're beating closing lines, right? So what's happening is like say what I mean by that: say you're betting like for instance a line the lines an NFL game and it's minus six. You bet them at minus six, by the time the game starts, if the line is like minus six and a half or minus seven, it means you beat the market, like the closing line. So wherever the game starts at, that's where all these people in the world think that the sport is supposed to end, right? So now what's good is, is like if you're consistently beating the closing line over time, which is what which I preach, by the way, which no other handicapper in the world even knows about, because like Mickey said earlier, they're all frauds. I is stand behind gonna, them, Yes, yeah. except for me, is, is you're going to long-term guarantee to make money. Right, it's as that, long as you have proper bank management. But to a non-gambler, what he's saying is that when he buys the line, right, places the bet, and it's at minus six, and it closes at minus seven, he just bought it on sale. Is what happened, right? So he doesn't care what the team is, what the sport is, nothing. All he knows is he got the right price for his money. He bought that bet on sale. The sale was of one point, which is a massive difference. I'm assuming you're running analytics to pick which lines to oh, bet, absolutely. right? You're not just yeah, being yeah. like, I'll take all the lines and hope they all move, right? Yeah. Do all the lines always move or some like stay? Well, so, so what happens is it's not always because like there's injury news and stuff that you couldn't know about personally, unless you have inside info. And uh, which also, by the way, I've been in the sports world so much. I know people like within, I don't know if I should share it, if it's legal or not, but like within like sports teams and NBA leagues. So I'll get pre-info to injury news when they do come out. By so accident, like, of course. Yeah, never, in, never. In, I'm such an idiot. I know so, so many <laughs> hockey players. Never, like, how never you intentional today? sharing no, of information. Just, yeah, do you just right. text them all uh, every no, day? No, he'll be in the room, <laughs> and somebody will uh, overhear here. it. I would, and... I would literally text everyone back. How are you feeling this morning? <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, so, but happens is so sometimes the line could go against you if like some injury happens. It's unarmed. But over like ninety percent of the time, like my stuff will beat the market. But if I have a super sick account where I'm in these casinos, I could bet massive amounts of money. I could also personally manipulate the market to make sure the line will not close in favor. So I'll just like move it because like all these sports books label my accounts as sharp because they know I beat them and stuff and whatever. And like sports books follow sports books. So anyways, what I'll do is I'll beat these sports books. So the people, the sports books, what happens is like, I would say like um, the people that work at the sports books, they're pro betters, right? And the people that are, thank you, that are like running the books, they're only being paid like 150, 200,000 a year to run it. Like and these me. are just what, just like numbers guys that are trying yeah, to- Yeah, they're like, building their own algorithms. Stuff there's like not me. even an yeah, AI. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, they have their own AI and stuff, but like I create my own. And the truth is, is I would never go work for someone for 200,000 a year. Like I'm making millions a month betting myself, right? So why would I do that? Are the people who make the lines allowed to bet? Uh, in the sports books. Originators? So, yeah. So, actually, what's nah, funny no is a lot way. of these... You think originators are, like, allowed to bet? Or you just tell, well, them, like, a friend to do the bet? So, one of the biggest sports books in the world, actually, is ran by pro sports bettors. And they wanted to do it because they're getting cut everywhere, right? So, what they do is they wanted to make their own market so people could do it, And they just keep their line at where they think the market's supposed to be at. And so, this is the way they get down and stuff. Like, Bob Aravalos did this. You know what that is? No. A massive yeah. sport sharp, super famous in the, in the gambling world, pro professional poker player, super sharp. And the NBA had been trying to hire him to run analytics for a really long time. And he He's goes, working at Dallas though right now. Yeah, yeah, but he, but he used to go. He used to be like, why would I work for you at the NBA when I'm making, making way more money betting against yeah. you? So he never There's no the incentive, job. right? Yeah, right. He's, you know, he's like, I'm crushing you guys in the NBA. Why would I work, quit my job and work for you? Eventually, um, Mark Cuban made him a sick offer. It's actually not that long ago. Like pretty recently, made him a sick offer, and he went and now he works for Dallas. Oh, even, cool. even though even though Mark just sold it, but yeah. Well, he's and making he's making way less money there. But his dream is I know him personally as well. His dream is to own an NBA team, 
and he's made a lot in the sports world. I actually used to gamble against him because, like, a lot of these sharps, we gamble against each other and stuff. Like, and uh, he had to completely had to stop sports betting because, like, you can't be in the NBA That's and gambling. Nice. But he's running, he's running their analytics and stuff over there. He, so he took his model and it's crushing for them. Is it true that after you didn't want to split the pot? For nine point two or nine point three, you want two million a week later or something like that. Well, yeah, that's a true story as well. So I'll tell you back to the circa thing. So I go there and my boy, I'm not on the internet at all, right, mm -hmm. Mickey? I my whole life I've been trying to stay low key. I hustle on my own. Like I don't want anyone to know I'm winning. Like uh, the truth is, like even very Jewish of you. Yeah, 100%. Well, you don't you don't want a bunch of people like knowing you're <laughs> well because no one no one wants to gamble against someone that they know. Is a good gamble. It's way better to be an underdog. Anyway. Yeah, you want to. I like so that. My, I like my, that better. My thing is, hey, I'm just a. And you're kind of unassuming. Kid. Like I would be 100%. like, oh, I can beat this guy. If you don't yeah. wear that watch, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you wear that watch, I'm like, all right, something's going on. <laughs> <laughs> so, 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 yeah. What's happening is I showed up. So, circa, I showed up to circa, and I brought a million dollars with me, and I told them, hey, in cash. Yeah. What are you just walking well, in the briefcase? Chips, chips. So, like, how we do it is like we. And it's the same thing as cash, and like, it's just like basically. If you bring a lot of money in cash somewhere, it, it sucks, right? It's you want to have chips, you could just put a million in your yeah, pocket. Yeah, of course. It's so actually, I showed annoying. up, it was the true story, I showed up with 500,000 and just to see if I could get a big limits. And I told them my story, my hustle. Hey, I'm a big loser here. I've showed them my highest level player cards. They gave me a massive account. And then he's like, also, there's these two competitions here. Like we have the Circus Survivor, which is like 9,300 people entered, 1K buy-in, winner take all. And there was another competition where it's like Circa Millions, 1K buy-in, 6,300 people entered, and there's like placings there, right? And I, I was like, okay, sure, I'll enter these competitions, whatever, right? And I deposited my money. He set me up. and I'm in a, a group chat with the guy who's head of Circa because I have him convinced I'm a, I'm a whale. And uh, I'm they're firing. And I, as I left, I was actually, hey, like, actually, can I back out of this competition, which is kind of funny. Like, I don't even want to be too small for me. Like, I don't care about a $1,000 bet like i'm right. betting i'm betting six i just did it to act like a gambler and gj and oh i'm chasing 9.3 million right so he's like no nah, you're already in so basically i end up entering this competition there's like only 13 people left and each team at this point is worth like seven hundred thousand dollars and the truth is for me it's not i'm not, still not excited because it's like yo I, i'm literally betting this shit on a daily basis like every day i have seven figures in action in sports every single day right so what's happening is my friends is like yo they're all these people are like on Twitter looking for Golden Boy, which is me, right? To fucking chop this pot. And I'm just like, so I was like, all right, you know what? I was like at home in bed. I was just like, you know, let's cause some drama. So I just hop on a Twitter and I have no tweets, nothing. I'm just going, yo, with all due respect, I'm the greatest better in the world. There ain't no way I'm chopping. I wish you guys the best, but I'll see you at the finish line. You know what I'm saying? Because <laughs> hell yeah. you so only like, $1,000 and you never even cared to begin with, right? Yeah. Well, well, like, I, you didn't come to a competition to have, oh, let's all go home. Everyone's a winner. Like, yo, <laughs> yeah. I want, this is my glory. 100%. Yeah. Honestly, so, it's gambling. So, it's honestly it's so gangster though, because every <laughs> tournament in the world, you that's, always chop the final. so gay. <laughs> but you're just Why? Because you're guaranteed. Because you can get unlucky one time being the best in the world. You get unlucky one time, you're out. Also, a lot of those people that he like he's crossing paths paths with that are in the top thirteen. That sounds. They like look at you. They're just like, "Yo, you really not going to chop the spot?" Like, come on, that's, bro. A, well, particip that's was, a participation trophy. So and I did. I give them that. For them, it was like a thing where they're like, "Hey, like." It's a 1K buy-in, so it's a lot of broke people kind of thing. That this is a shot taken for 9.3 million. They're like, hey, I could pay off my mortgage. Like, let's lock up. So we're broke. You see, we're down two thousand. Whatever. Broke people. Yeah. <laughs> 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 took shots. And it's not <laughs> as cool as broke. <laughs> Listen, not yeah. my problem. <laughs> All right, go ahead, go ahead. But going. so I'm just like, with if you guys really want to chop, like my team is 700,000 at the time. My analytics have my team being worth one and a half million. So I'm definitely not chopping for 700k. I was like, my team's like worth one and a half million. I'll take two million a chop. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, it's fair. And so, whatever, nothing happened. I had hundreds of thousands of people anti riding me, right? Which is whatever. I kind of love it, to be honest. And it just kind of the story blew up. I did finish fifth place for zero dollars in that competition. So, uh -huh. I, going back, like, they, people are like, oh, you should chop. Like, the truth is, I don't regret it because, like, gambling is, there's no guarantee. I'm not it's saying. It's a gamble. You, you, well, you're gambling with the best of it and that's all that matters. And long term, if you have the best of it over and over and over again, you're going to make a lot of money. And for instance, like casinos, right? They're built, Vegas is known to be built on 2%. I'm sure you heard about this all the time, Mickey, right? And sports, I'll have like a 6% edge. So imagine how rich you can get per bet if you have a 6% edge on all these bets. You just like can print unlimited money. And the law of large so, numbers. 
essentially it'll always work itself out to every bet you place winning 6%. So by just having money, you're making money. Right. 6%. So better than a savings account. Way better. Well, it's, it's crushing and then it can repeat yeah. itself. That's why being a sharp better is like phenomenal. But um, but don't fall for the fake guys on the internet. They're everywhere. And what bet did you win 2 million on after? So there was just like a few different series of bets, but it's there's more <laughs> about this circa. So I lose this competition and they're like, oh, fuck this kid, blah, blah, blah. And then I was like, oh, really? Well, like what's funny is how I found out about this competition, I showed up, deposited a million dollars, and I beat the book for five hundred thousand that first week I was there betting myself. And then they they took they they keep I have message threads with like the the guy who his name's Jeffrey who runs that sports book there. And I'm just like he's like yeah we're gonna have to cut down your limits and blah blah. They basically lowered me so much and now if I go bet something they'll move the whole market one whole point. I'm only able to bet like twenty or fifty k and then I can't bet my money elsewhere. So wow. it's unbettable for me to bet there now. And so it's like, yeah, I won, I won 500,000 there my first week there. So yes, I got zero from the competition. And then they had another competition, which was the Circa Millions, where 6,300 people entered. And you pick five teams each week against the spread. And I finished ninth place there for like 75,000, 1K as well. So like, I just like, obviously everyone just saw that, yo, this guy's the real fucking deal. Um, people already know, like Mickey already knows, like from me, like we're friends for years now in the gaming world. He knows I'm like crushing in sports a lot, but um so yeah so but why why do you have to do this in person and not online what do you mean the gambling side of sports betting you can't do this online. well no online a lot of this stuff but this is just in the book so i was okay. just me hustling the circuit you act, do you physically enjoy going to the casino and doing the bets or do you like to do it more online well it's it's easier when so even when i'm in the casino i don't go personally usually i have apps and you create these mobile apps and whatever but the truth is i don't have access to any of those anymore they're all restricted every single place so I'm limited. Now what I can do is I can go to the cage and make one bet if their line's sticking out. Because how the sports book operates, they just kind of want to balance the sports book. They don't rest of care. So if they, for Super Bowl, for instance, I have videos of me betting multiple seven figures on Super Bowl bets. Because they'd have some guy come in who's a whale, bet the wrong side, and I'll go bet the opposite side to balance it out. And uh, That's also something that could be created, by the way, in, in this sharp world in sports. So, like, let's pretend, like, he has to bet through other accounts, right? Like, aggregates. Right. Let's make it easy numbers. Let's pretend he has 10 accounts he's betting. He'll bet across five of them a total of half a million on what he knows will be a losing bet because it'll like, move the needle. It'll change the line. Now he's getting a better price on what he or, him and his team already knew is the winning side, and then he takes the other five. And he bets a million across that, so he's going to win for a better so he price on both ends. But just to just to bring the line up, just to and move then, the line, so he gets a better, better price on the winning on, side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's crazy. Can, that, that's manipulating the market right there. Who's going to win the Super Bowl? Well, we have to see who's there first. But if you want to know, yeah, I, uh, so you can I, take a guess right now. I'll tell you. So I, I, you got to go to Sean Perry wins my G and click the link in bio, and I'm giving all my info there. So what I started doing after Who's the competition not is everyone wanted to like get access to my plays and stuff. I'm getting right. blown up. So I was like, you know what? Let's come out. And uh, I started giving out my plays to people. And it's like been super rewarding. Awesome. I have like in two weeks, like over 10,000 people in a Telegram chat of people following me and stuff. And it, like Everyone's my winning. plays have been absolutely crushing. Like all the lines are moving. People are like, holy fuck. I, I can't understand how this is a thing. They didn't even know about line movement. All my lines, like bets are beating the lines. My lock of the day, which is like, Mickey doesn't like that it's saying. The it's the worst like, phrase. It's what all like the scammers his, say. It's what but, the scammers say. But he's so new to social media that he hasn't, he, he hasn't expanded the vocabulary of social media. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. He's kind of behind come up with the, You'll come up with your own yeah. language. Well, yeah, exactly. I, I like Eventually. it. I like it. Like, uh, but the truth is, it's, it's not like, it's no the highest edge play. Yes, That's what it is. Right. But play lock of the day is just good branding. Yeah. yeah, yeah but, I feel like your Kramer are going to slap a fucking button. Lock of the day. But that's the scammer script, which is what I'm trying to tell him. Like, bro, like you actually win. Don't read the same script of the losers, you know? Right. But I say, because it's like my biggest edge play and whatnot, and I've been doing it for 19 days now, that play in itself is has a record of like 15 and four. And so people have been like completely incinerating money. Like Offset, for instance, like uh, you guys all know who he is. Yeah. He, he found me through the internet. And we're like, we're now like best friends. He's like on FaceTime with me every single day. He's and telling Cardi me, B, yeah. it's like, he's, he's up like 700,000. He got banned from one bookie. He's now on his next bookie because that's what also another right. thing is like these people are going to now starting betting sharp because they're things. not taking the action. They're not going to. Yeah, no bookie's going to want to take yeah. the well, action. Who are, who are these bookies? This is what you're just like. These are the street bookies, the street, street, street bookies, bookies that, that are funding has, it. Yeah, 100 yeah. percent or through yeah. casinos, casinos. Like I have so many people that have been getting like banned and stuff. So they have to find new ways to bet. So offset for instance, one seven hundred thousand. He's like, bro, like I'm coming to Vegas for the Super Bowl with you and we're going to fire a million each on the game. And I said, bet, like that's going to happen. So looking forward to that. Oh, real quick, I'm going to tell you right now. I don't know what today's date is, but we definitely are before anybody knows who's playing in the Super Bowl. So is the 
25th. Today's January 25th at 12, 14 p.m. Mark my words, the Super Bowl is going to be the 49ers and the Ravens. Okay. There it is, baby. There we go. How did you guys meet? Can I make that bet right now? um, Technically, yeah. Yeah, You You want to know the story how we met? Just okay, so I'm not known to be going out or anything. I'm like a very like analytical nerd, Jewish nerd, nerd kind of guy. My friend hits me up and he goes, yo, I want to take you to the most insane thing ever right now. There's this guy who's at the mansions at MGM, which by the way, you cannot pay to get in the MGM mansions. The only way to get inside these MGM mansions is by being a very high roller gambler. And they're meant for their super, because the truth is in Vegas, no one cares if you're a celebrity. No one cares if you're the president. No one cares nothing. They care about making money. So for them, the most important things are the high rollers, right? And Mickey, he's like, has the mansion. So as I'm, okay, this is going to be good. And he's like, these guys have been throwing the most insane parties. Like, just come. And I was like, all right, sure. We get escorted down this like hall to the mansions by some butler. And we come up, right? And it's an elevator that opens directly into this unit. You already know where the story is about to go, right? <laughs> the elevator <laughs> only has two places. The first floor where the butler brings you, and when it, op- it goes to one other level, when it opens, that's my villa. It's right in this living. villa. So it's we're coming in, and I see Mickey right when this elevator opens. We're laying on he's laying on a table, and he's getting his dick sucked in the middle of this party. <laughs> and I'm just like, what the hell did I just walk into? It's my first thing, and he goes like, they're talking to me. What's up? And I'm like, say dabbing him up while he's getting his dick sucked. How old were you? This was like. Three years ago, yeah, two years ago, yeah. so I was twenty four years old. No, I think it was four years ago. A good Jewish boy yeah. that runs numbers walking in and sees <laughs> like, a full table. <laughs> and then, and well, then they well, just, well, the reason, just so you know, the reason we do that is when the door opens and I'm laying there. There's always like like a line of naked girls or whatever it is, right? Either you immediately say, "What did I just walk into? I'm out," or you say, "I found my home," and it vets everybody out right away. So we know, like anyone who's in there, they know what time it is, and they're just with it. They're here to have a good time, you mm-hmm. know. Right. So, so I met him here and we started talking. He knew at the time I was like playing a lot of poker. I was really good. And he's telling me what he's doing. And I'm like, yo, how do you have this room? Blah, blah, blah. And I'm seeing him winning all this money. My friend, like he's up, like was up like what at that point, maybe like 20 million, 15 million. Not well. Yeah. But not on that, that session. No, that, just like lifetime at that point playing Bakra. I think it was something in the realm of 20 million at that time. So, so one thing that's an anomaly that I still understand. So I told you earlier the four things that you could beat a casino in, in gambling. One, poker, sports, blackjack, and progressive slot machines. Mickey is the only dude in this world that I've ever found that is able to actually beat, for instance, the table games. Like he is a lifelong winner in Baccarat. He's the only person that's banned. There's actually the one other story of this guy. He's a poker player as well, Phil Ivey, who was beating Baccarat. But poker he, player, he, right? Yeah, yeah, poker player, but he was- uh, how, how green are you in, in, in uh, card games right now? What do you mean green? Like, what, 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 what are you winning? positive? What's your winnings right now, technically? I, I'm not going to say that I'm saying this, but it has been calculated by an eight particular agency at $32 million profit. That you're in right now at this yeah, point? Yeah. Wow. It's a lot of money. We're 100%. We're down two grand. You guys want to... Oh, by the way, so we have a, we have a whole thing. <laughs> we, we lost two, two grand amongst ourselves. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? You guys trying to help us win that back or no? While we're in Vegas. Yeah, we can. Well, we definitely can do that very easy. Yeah. By the way, so what's the easiest way to win two grand? The easiest way to win two grand is someone just writes you a check for two grand yeah. and you don't gamble. <laughs> so, that's so you guys want to do that? <laughs> 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 you brought your checkbook? <laughs> if if prevent, we actually make all our guests pay. We'll, prevent, we'll shout you out and get your Discord <laughs> followers. We might as well pull it the even two, up. The two, there we go, 100%. Yeah, just so give us all I got to do is give you a $2,000 check. Are you kidding me? Honestly, I'm good with that, bro. I don't want to go back to those tables. Just write me out two bands and we're out of here. I'm good. So, so yeah, we were at this, basically this party and, uh, we just became boys. We're both in gambling. He's telling me about what he's doing. And I'm truthfully, I'm a time I'm kind of not believing it. Like, I'm just like, dude, there's no way you could win a buck run. It just doesn't exist. And th- I still like, think of it like it, there's no way it exists. And that's why he was able to win so much against the casinos because they also believe there is no way to actually beat Baccarat, unless you're cheating, like edge sorting, which is like, you know what the, there's like some decks, what Phil Ivey was doing is it was cut, misplaced the cuts. Mm-hmm. So he could have this girl who was sitting with him has super sharp eyes and can see which cards, which, so know which wow. side to bet on. Right. But so that's like cheating. He actually had to give all his money back, but Mickey's the only dude that has actually won money. And the casinos were letting him, by the way, at these parties that I was talking about, he was throwing were so legendary. He would just like one party he threw that I went to was like an eye break party. 
the only way to get into this place yeah, yeah, yeah. was you had to actually vandalize something there. So you had to like, like break a vase, smash, <laughs> yeah, yeah. smash an aquarium, like do some insane stuff. I, You're way, just trying to get them back. It, well, the way well, we were just having fun, you know. <laughs> so in order to get into the party, you have to break something first. So people were just smashing anything, and you know, and the casino didn't care. You know, there's only one time in my history with the casino that they ever said anything about damage, and it was be way before all this stuff when I was kind of like a regular size better. I smashed a TV in my suite and they're like, hey, can you give us $1,200 to pay for the TV? And I said, no. And they said, okay, please just don't break anymore. And after that, they did whatever. They would bring stuff in knowing that I was gonna break stuff. They just bring extra things in. It was like, you gotta think about, I was playing a quarter million dollars a hand, right? So they knew, just like Sean, they knew Baccarat can't be beat, right? This is the theory they're under, which is why they let me play as long as I did and for as high limits as I did. So they're like, he's gonna lose tens of millions of dollars we do not care, care about this does. damage, yeah, which is, again, right. like the only thing Vegas cares about is the high rollers. They don't care about us breaking vases and TVs. They don't care about us partying. They don't care about none of that. They just care about making sure we are always happy so we spend more time in their doors to lose all the money. And right. he was gambling so big, like he's like the president of the casino. He could do whatever he wants, and they're like, oh, we're going to get all the money. It doesn't matter. And then what happens is eventually they took such a beating and they're like, this guy broke the code. He's able to actually win in Baccarat. He was just going everywhere. So then one by one, the casinos started banning him. And they just like, which it's the crazy because we the other day went to Aria, right? So these casinos are banning him now because they're like, hey, you're the only anomaly we've ever met in Baccarat. We don't want your action. Anymore. And they don't know how yeah. I did it. They, they do not know how. how. And yeah. I also which, don't know how. Because yeah. you sat next to him. Well, because... Well, we it's play just, together. We right. played the other day together. Do you follow oh, him? Yeah. So, so is, yeah, yeah. How does Baccarat we, play? You we, both. We played on camera the other day. My whole Baccarat session, we put on camera. It's on film. I wanted to see what's going on because I still believe, like, yo, you can't win. In Baccarat. It's <laughs> yeah. like I don't know. <laughs> believe and that's it's like the casinos. The casinos. It. That's why you can win, and don't, you can't win. And then they just like fuck. This guy just knows how to win. I don't know the answer. I'm like asking him. He obviously isn't going to share it, right? Like the same way in sports. I'm not going to ever share my algorithms on how I win in sports. That's where. That's how I make my money. Right. And this is how Mickey makes his money, right? So whatever, we go to this one casino that they're still allowing him to gamble at. Within like 10 minutes, we're up a bunch. I saw the video. Of oh, you saw it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw you guys were gambling. I think we won yeah. like, so the truth is we end up profiting 150000 but there was one hand that I was like, hey, you know what? Let me bet this hand. He was like, nah, like, let's pass this one. I don't, I don't know. Bang. I heard the lady yelling. You tried to straight from him? Yeah. Well, so I'm yeah, like, yeah, I got yeah, this. Yeah, yeah, he's so hot. Happy. We're he's winning so much. I was like, dude, we got to bet every hand. You know like, what I mean? Maybe he's not the only one. <laughs> this kid is smiling, he, but you can see he's wired. He's kind of recording or whatever. And then the lady in the back, she's like, no cameras. We told you. Oh, yeah. Take it off. Take it off. He's yelling at us nonstop. Yeah, but that was a video he took on his phone as soon as we finished playing. But what happened was they they were stealing from us on the commission. They were tacking on an extra thousand for each of us, every single hand we won. So we had to wait for them to run every hand back on the cameras to confirm the suspicion that they, that we had been getting robbed on the commission, right? In the commission, we pay 5% back to the house on every bet we win on the bank side. Right. So sometimes it's hard to track, especially because I'm focused on the game. I'm trusting the dealer. Like, I need you to make this uh, commission correct. I can't focus on that math. I got something else going on in my head. Turns out that they were robbing us. We had to sit there for a while, and that's when he recorded that. But we actually oh, wow. recorded the Big entire... Big casinos rob like that? All the time. Really? Well, they yeah, try who? to cheat for sure. I mean, actually, look, they didn't let you play yesterday when you were just th trying to throw money on roulette. There were like six people max at this table. I was like... And he threw in money first, I was like, too. I'm just putting 100 bucks yeah. down on a number for fun. And they're like, no. Bro, it's like... <laughs> the casino cheated me once before, too. So back to the progressive slot machines where there's teams that have, like, you can win and stuff. So my dad is gambling and whatnot. He's actually was part of these teams and was a winner. And on my 21st birthday, when I found Your dad was a slot legal, hustler? Oh, 100%. Fire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fire. So he taught me the ropes on the slot machines and stuff. My 21st birthday, I was telling everyone underage, there's this big poker term. I was like, oh, I'm going to ship this tournament, right? And uh, what ended up happening is it was 10K buying, Bellagio, five diamond. I ended up getting fourth place for 500,000 in that tournament. <laughs> So happy 21st birthday to me. And then me and my dad, we went partners and there was, we were playing these progressive machines at, at the Blas show. And uh, we ended up losing 700,000 and we were down 700K at one point, right? And we're like, what the heck's supposed to happen? Like, cause Mickey said, you, you should know when you're gonna hit this jackpot. Like you could run the algorithms and we we're supposed to basically hit it every six hours. And we're there now three straight days and it hasn't hit. <laughs> and we're like, what the heck's happening, right? And then I come in, we stop playing and we finally get some sleep and I come back at 4 a.m. and all the 10 machines are supposed to be independent of each other, but they're all resetting at the same time. And I tell my dad, and so we start counting, we're like, wait a minute, they're actually cheating us here. They're readjusting the machine 
as the progressive gets higher and higher, which they're not supposed to be doing. Meaning that they're not letting it get to that point and that yeah, to ever be the, profitable. They won't let wow. the threshold click, right? So they so, just keep hiring. Making and, then what, and, and what does it go down? No, they just keep oh, making ooh. the they just keep making the finish line further away, okay, so more it. money gets pumped into it before they have to give any out. See, I like got hearing it. a little loss story. Right? Yeah. You see that? Oh no! So yeah, you we win and lose hundred percent. So but we realize, hey, we're, we don't have an edge here, so we instantly stopped. Seven hundred bands down in the gutter is not nice. <laughs> yeah, for sure. But I mean, yeah, but it's all relative, right? Definitely. Yeah, right? it's like us losing two grand. Well, yeah. Well, yeah. Whoa. Well, I mean, so I've had months, not as relative. I've had months where I've lost like more than five million dollars. Do you Same. get sad? Yes. Like. I do mean, you get no, depressed? I just, do you I just, just go know fuck that it? it's, it's part of it's part of this business, right? Like, there's no guaranteed winning in gambling. We have the best of it, and long term, we just have to have a proper bankroll so we can continue gambling. Right, and so that's what we both yeah. we'll both preach: never go all in on anything. Like, we long term know for a fact we're both going to make money in what we do. So as long as you have a bankroll and you get proper bet sizing, you're going to guarantee make money over the course of a lifetime. So I don't I don't really get like that. Both of us are very successful because I guarantee. Like I see them, we play poker, massive pots. If we lose, we're chilling. It doesn't like you're not it doesn't, emotional. No, we're not emotional. Like we know that this is. I'm like, an emotional gambler. I go that, all you're in. You're a gambler. Everyone, that's, everyone yeah, goes. Yeah, that's a gambler. Like that's you a get annoyed at blackjack and you go all in, but you shouldn't, right? Like that's you're a saying, you should never. Gambler. Yeah, I'm just like yeah, I, I, I gamble yesterday. my emotions and I go. Competitive. All, so I'm, I'm like, like oh, really? this is where I win. And I'm like, I'm literally going to win $50. It's not going to change my I also had here. some hillbilly guys sit next to me. He kept coming in, coming out, messing up my whole flow. My, the momentum, would, like I had the flow going. You got to get your own table. You shouldn't let strangers in like that. This guy can... You know, I said that. Remember we did the 10 gambling commandments? Yeah. So a big thing people were saying was like, how do you get your own table? How can you control strangers? There are so many simple ways. The simplest... <laughs> yeah, I need money. you to tell. I need money. you to tell. You tell the pit boss, hey, I'd like to reserve this table. Then they put a reserve sign on. How much is the, does it change? Nothing. The, you just, the guy likes it, so he just does it. Yeah. And then how much does the game change? 100%. Because you're the only variable. You don't have independent variables anymore. No, just I mean, you. like, are they like, all right, we got to fucking quadruple the minimum for you now? Sometimes, no. Well, they, they make yes. you have a, a minimum for sure, I think. Right. You can't well, just you go, can't go can't shut down the table or $10 blackjack. Okay, <laughs> 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 I was like, yo, shut this down. $10 blackjack. Everybody roll out. This is a lot. $25 table. He's just betting on the biggest possible. Yeah, you're forgetting, dude. We're talking about shooting hoops to Michael Jordan. Okay, I'll take the minimum, bro. Here's the thing. 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 Here's Outside, right? Outside means not high limit. Just means the casino floor, right? right. You're betting twenty five dollars a hand, but you got the strange guy coming in and out, doing whatever, staying on sixteen, hitting on twelves, whatever idiocracies these morons do. Right? <laughs> That's what Val's doing. <laughs> <laughs> the whole like them. I'm like, yo. He's like, I don't like following the rules. I don't like the book. I'm like, dude. Yeah, we're because we're not playing with money that changes our life, right? When they're playing, that's work. When I'm playing with a thousand, well, he said he doesn't get upset over five hundred. But you're listening. When I'm when I'm gambling with a thousand dollars. I want to feel something. So I'll hit on a 17 because I'm like, dude, even if I win, it doesn't change my life. But if on a freak accident, I pull a four, that gives me the rush more so than the safe bet. And I ruin it for everyone else around me. I understand that because they're playing to work like you guys and I'm playing to just feel. the, The competitive nature of Val you know, I see that and I'm like, what are we doing? So this I is what said, let's do. stay. I'm having fun. On, stay on board here. I don't, you. Please. <laughs> I lost that thousand. I lost that thousand the minute I walked in the casino. So this is what you can do, right? I want to feel like Danny Ocean. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So this is what you can do, right? So imagine this. You're betting $25 a hand, but you got all these people hit, staying on 16, hitting on 12, in and out, messing everything up, Gets right? Gets me tight. Yeah. Right? And you're losing. You're like guaranteed to lose, basically. Unless you just get lucky, which can happen, but you're basically long-term going to lose. So... For a hundred dollars, only seventy five dollars more, you go in a high limit. That's they will cool. always reserve the table for you, and also those tables are oftentimes empty, and they know that high limit players love to play alone more times than not. So they have many tables available, so everyone can, without even reserving it, just get their own table. It's gonna be the same thing anyway. Because if I'm throwing seventy five to hundred, I was at a ten min table, right? Yesterday you were like, "Why are we at this ten dollar table?" If you're throwing hundred every time, he's like, "We might." Yeah, you should have gone to the high limit table. Go to right. high limit, they man. Speaking buy- of high limit, you're getting me excited again. I think we need to go play some more Baccarat and you make me another couple hundred thousand. I think you also have another friend, that, right? Yeah, yeah. I came here with Brandy. Brandy. Yeah, when yeah. I'm in Vegas, I spend as much time with her as I can. Well, and let me give her a spot. I got to get out of here. I'll start going fire some sports and get people in my plays and whatnot before the lines move and things like that. Maybe she'll come take my spot. I love you, buddy. Dude, you're the man. This is we'll see you later so. to gamble a little hey, bit. Hey, this was great. Yeah. Don't I'm going to go hanging. work right now. John Cohen did this to uh, me and people talk so much trash. We'll go gamble. Yes. Yes. My hands are sweaty. Party tonight, right? Dude, I'll see you later. That'll be a lot of fun. Sean, it was great yeah. having you. You're the man. You guys, the admission's 400 grand, guys. Just letting you know. Are we still rolling? Yeah, let's just keep it rolling. We're just going to slide her in. Yeah. All right, so do you want to do a proper intro for your bestie?
Uh, and uh, I'm, you guys are obviously know each other. You guys are homies, so. Hi, Brady and I, hi. No. <laughs> First of all, I have to ask this. Have you guys fucked? Never. Depends Never. who you ask, you know. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> Were you out cold or was she out cold? I don't know. <laughs> Maybe we got <laughs> some. So it was like a borderline <laughs> raping and I hope she raped you and not the other way around. <laughs> <laughs> That's bad funny. You never seen our sex tape? No, I'm good. Uh, Dude, you guys should totally make one, but then like- I go to the zoo only once a year. <laughs> like she just puts on a strap on. Would you fuck him? No. no well, like, no, no, oh, in the butt. No. Nothing. You wouldn't have sex with me in different circumstances? No. Yes, you would. No, I wouldn't. You don't, you wouldn't? No. Yes, you would. No, I If we not. weren't friends and you didn't know my life as deep as did you, you know did. that that was our case at one point and I still didn't fuck you? Well, I didn't pursue it. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's such a, a thing between guys and girls, right? Because every guy would 95% fuck every one of his girlfriends, no matter how hot they are or how disgusting they are. I personally wouldn't, but girls, I would literally- I'll tell you this. This is a real thing about, about me and Brandy. I don't even know if she realizes this. I have had sex with 100% of my female friends, right? Should you fuck your friends? Yeah, because most friends don't last forever anyway. So you might as well get the most you can from it. You know, enjoy the friendship nice. the most. Also, I would say anybody who's going to use that, that, our setup to try to say- like if a girl's like, look, they're best friends and they don't have sex. So this guy is also my guy best friend. Don't be jealous. She's lying. You know, 100%. Like, 99% of the time, they're, someone's fucking someone. Way more than 99%. We're talking like such a sli like such a sliver that I ever think it's appropriate in a relationship to justify uh, like this, you know, uh, with a mutual um, gender relationship, mm -hmm. like friendship. It's like non-existent. Like no one's ever going to say you and Brandy are best friends. Like I know girl that I'm talking to. It's like you and Brandy are best friends don't have sex. So I could be best friends with this guy. We don't have sex. Shut up. I don't want to hear none of this. I'm not buying it. You know, when it comes to Brandy, she, I did try to have sex with her for sure. More than once. Right. <laughs> but I had my girl. And so she would like shut me down. But like she always was so solid of a human that while I had my girl, I was like, let me just quit trying to like hook up with her. It's very humbling when they become your friend and you're like, let's have sex. And they're like, no, it's OK. <laughs> <laughs> they're like, like, no, don't worry. Uh, yeah. Well, no, like, cool. since, we're going to start splitting we became dinners. friends, he never tried. It was like no, in the yeah. very, very yeah. beginning yeah. before we were solid friends. It was like we knew each other yeah. and he would take his little jobs. And I was just like, get the fuck out of here. Do you I, judge the guys she dates? <laughs> of course she also has terrible taste in men usually. what is your taste in men terrible like what's what's a red flag that you love i don't Do you, know i mean typically you, every guy I date looks the same they're over six foot tall they're covered in tattoos head to toe they're very physically fit and a little self-absorbed um and they Those usually like they usually don't have or like they, yeah they sound like they're, they're, they're usually not very <laughs> Do, do educated you, they're always they're, homeless have no money no aspirations you make your own money I don't so mean, you're always you're so supporting a bunch of i had this bums. mentality when i was younger and it, as i've gotten older it's like fucked but when i was younger i was like everyone's like oh you always date these really attractive men but they have nothing else to offer i said i don't need anything else like i emotionally can support myself i have friends for everything i need you know emotionally spiritually whatever uh financially i can take care of my i only need a guy who looks good because i only really need a guy for sex so, like I don't, right, so but a guy who looks only looks good is lacking so much other shit exactly, that you're not you're not letting him spread his wings because you're taking too much of the responsibilities in the relationship. So that dude is literally just like, oh, I'm cock. just a pretty face and has no other worth. Right, That's, he has no. Yeah. I'm not no stopping drive. them from pursuing something though. It's if anything, when, if I if used to invest in them. I used to be like, "Hey, what do you want to do with your life? What's your goal? What's this?" Like, I would have got crazy where you I were was. Their mom. Yeah, I would have got where I was if I had some help. Yeah, but a it's lot harder. Sooner. It's harder for a guy to accept help from a woman. Yeah, they it is. Accept it's it. way tougher. Oh, I mean, she's they accept it. They'll take the mama. money, but she's they're a sugar mom is what she is. But basically, what I said. That's why I said. As I've gotten older, I've realized that like where all the flaws and that were. But when I was younger, it was like, yeah, all I cared about right. was that they're good. Like as I've gotten older, it, like a lot more matters. And I'm realizing that if a guy isn't like, and I've told him a million times, like I don't care about money. And he's told me that's great that you don't care about money. But if someone doesn't have money, what does that say about the kind of person they are? Like there are usually people who don't have money, aren't very intelligent. They're not very talented. They're not very successful in other areas of their life. Like it's the qualities right. that someone brings. Right, I guess that's a funny thing to say, right? Like, because we all say, it. like, I say, I don't care about how much money my girlfriend makes, right? It doesn't matter to me. Right. But I do care about how what my girlfriend looks like, right? So I have all these other prerequisites. And why is money always like, oh, I don't care how much she makes? The it's not like, money. Yeah, it's like, dude, it's the money, I don't care how much your money make. Yeah, I guess it's about the drive. Like, if she was an Uber driver, but she hustled, I'd be... 
Yeah. It's the characteristics that come along with somebody who's successful. You might not right. want someone who's rich, but most people who are I'm rich driven. are smart, driven, self-motivated. That's what it matters talented. to me. Talented. Yeah. It's just about the ambition when it comes right. to, I definitely would like to be the provider though, because that makes me, it's, it's not even the traditional aspect of it. I just feel at use as a masculine part you understand what i mean because if i feel like dude i also don't if like I, if, I, if I feel like you just said oh i do everything I, I provide the money i do this i don't need your help all i need you is for sex to me i'll be like yo i'm a herb that's why i, I just wouldn't off, like that that's why i started off with that was my mentality when i was younger as yeah. i've gotten older that's not my mentality anymore but the i still do have a type and the type i go for doesn't really physically match the qualities i'm looking she for also dates gay men here we go why are they gay Oh, they're just gay? They, uh, uh, they're homoerotic, um, homosexuals, yes. Oh, okay. I'm, but they... Uh, you what? <laughs> they only like butt stuff? The fact that we don't even have a clear answer here is enough. <laughs> I, at the time, was not under the impression that they were gay. <laughs> after, after, <laughs> oh, man. Did so you turn went, them gay? <laughs> no, after I After you, they went to dick? <laughs> they needed to be supported. <laughs> <laughs> but you see, that's why, that's why you can't date a man that you have to support because he's technically going to be gay. Yeah. Yeah. No, I don't if think a guy they, can't support... Think he's like, what gay. dick do I have to sit on? <laughs> I don't think Because that's gay. that, to me, is it's not even about the girl making more money. It's just the fact that I can't can't even like match or figure out a way to be at that level. I'm like, what am, what, no, what am I here for? Now you want to be wanted too. Like, like I'd love that you make a shit ton of money, but I wouldn't be able to date a girl that makes a shit ton of money because I like to be able to buy her things that she can't buy. Correct. Herself. But what yeah. if you can still buy her stuff and she can just buy you stuff back? Like, it's I like get a, it. More I like get a power it. couple level. I get well, it. I like I the power it's... couple aspect of yeah. it. But no, it has like to be I'm like not going to make less money to make somebody feel more comfortable. I agree with that. Right, yeah. You shouldn't put yourself down and just to shouldn't. make somebody feel better. You know what I mean? That's yeah. for sure. I You're agree with you. You're killing it in life. You should not change anything about you. Except for the people I date. Yeah. No. Get, no, off, yeah. get, off, get off a grinder. <laughs> <laughs> this girl's on grinder. She's, she's like, this guy looks hot. She's like, he's got tattoos. She's like, I don't he's need him for anything. She, she's like, I don't need him for anything. I just want him to look good. <laughs> Yo, that's we crazy. share sex toys. He we share sex toys is crazy. Toys. We share sex toys is nuts. When you when you date a guy, do you make him part of your content? How quickly do you? Because uh, part of oh. the appeal of you <laughs> is uh, you have to look single, right? Everyone wants that you're a virtual girlfriend. I honestly think that my personality, and I know this sounds really cheesy and cliche, but I'm very. Um, I go live a lot. That's my thing. I go live. So people see my personality, not just my looks. I'm very strategic on how I incorporate when I do have a boyfriend into my content because I don't like the guys I'm with to feel hidden or not a part of, or like I'm living a double life because I'm single and all this stuff for work and not like, I, I post that I have boyfriends. Yeah. I mean, I know majority of fans, girls, and just girls in my industry in general on Instagram even do hide their men and portray themselves as single because they think it's going to affect them. But if you can find a way to put them in and make them just as entertaining, kind of part of what's going on, not just a guy that's there that it's like, who's this douchebag, but like they're actually in your content and they kind of bring something to the table too, which is what I do. Then yeah. I also couldn't date someone who wasn't like that though. <laughs> I've actually never seen her have sex. Really? Yeah. Oh yeah. I would, I would watch, but Jesus. Yeah. Guys gotta be, right stay friends, bro. We are friends. <laughs> I'm not watching for her. I just want to make sure. I just want to see the guys go. <laughs> I want to make sure he's that not gay. gay. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to make sure the guy's yeah. not gay. He's he's shaving his asshole too. Yeah, yeah. But you guys are gonna fuck one day. I will make I that bet. I don't think we what, will. What's my line on that? We, bet? That's why we just tell people like it's it's a lot easier because he was having these issues with like hey like every time I bring you around say this you're my friend to a girl like it cock blocks me because they're like oh that's your friend you know and I said you just have to start saying like I'm your sister at that point because then girls aren't threatened by me and it did it totally changed the game for him every time he's like oh this is my friend my friend the girls oh and then walk off and then he's like this is my sister like oh and it's like. He never yeah, but because of girls right away are like, yo, what kind of annoying ass situation is this? I well, gotta constantly assumes. compete with this. I don't know. Yeah, if he's you're not a disgusting. Up with her. If I yeah. if he introduced some fat slob, no one would be threatened. He'd probably be like, that's definitely not. My well, sister. everyone <laughs> assumes that when a guy says this is my chick friend, at some point they are, will, or have fucked. So because I, they almost because always it, do. because yeah, it makes sense. But it's yeah, rare. I mean. Like I've been like that since I was little. Though I've had all guy friends growing up. I was having sleepovers <sighs> with guys when I was in third grade. Nothing ever happened. I've always just been like closer 
to men right. than women, but I don't, I've never hooked up with not a single one since right, right. ever. You guys are just fighting perceptions. Both of you look like you would fuck each other. Yeah, we definitely that's would it. look like that. But that's right. also why we say brother and sister and people don't even bad an eye. Cause we look, we look like we could be related, either, yeah, so. related or a couple, like we have mm-hmm. similar styles. Whatever. Well, these influence. brothers and sisters are going to fuck Listen, one So <laughs> my money's on that. Yeah. Incest is in right now anyway, right? So yeah. yeah. Basically right. go, going back also to what you were saying about you having everything going on. Like, imagine a guy wants to take you out to a sick dinner in L.A. to, like, a dope-ass sushi spot. I would love that. Right. But he can't afford paying $300 per person. And it's a $600 bill at Noble. And he, you're like, and you're like, he's like, babe, I can't really. Let's not go there. You're, let's go but here. you're confusing it. You think I'm, like, accustomed to some lifestyle just because I have my own money. With my own money, I don't spoil myself. There's a lot of shit I hesitate to buy for myself but would not hesitate to buy for my friends. And so my character defect on that topic, so I'll bring it to, like, a business dinner, right? Even if we all know that the guy who set up the meeting is supposed to pay, I can't control myself. I don't want to ever feel okay, like someone's nice. got it on me. So when a check comes, I'm very quick to make sure I grab it, put my card in, goodbye. I'll even do my best when I see that no one's done, everyone's done ordering to walk past and be like, here's my card. Don't bring the bill out, you know? Yeah, Kirill has that defect also. <laughs> he does yeah, that definitely. all the time. I'm a pretty bad Jew in that regard. Yeah. Me too. I don't like owing people anything. Yeah. And I'd rather own you. Yeah, I understand. I'd rather pick Jesus. up the check. Yeah, and then be how, like, "That's how America then, got yeah. started." Yeah, I'd rather, I'd rather pick up started. the check. Oh, Jesus, dude, it's Holy much cheaper fuck. to have you owe me one than me owe you one. Yeah, and I'd rather be the guy that picked up the bill and be like, "Oh, okay, oh, okay." Now I got one. Now in I pocket. know what you've been mm-hmm. doing this whole time. Yeah, what do you think? Yeah, that's how you, you're trying to owe me. <laughs> it's a business meeting, <laughs> but it, but it's like whoever do it's like kind of what you said is like who's like owning who has the upper hand. Like I rather have the upper hand, like feel strong, you know. Even if it's no a problem, you can have the upper hand all you want. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, all right, we're gonna win two grand. You yeah. buy me dinner, not a problem, brother. Like, like, take it, me anywhere you want. Like, me and you go out, and I pay for everything for the whole day. You might as well just be my woman. I'll make yeah, you're pretty much gay. Then you, gotta, then you gotta date Brandy. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, so don't let him pay for anything. Because <laughs> you said that you guys are just friends. <laughs> I pick up all the tabs, but happily, you know. But it's like a like a defect. I can't help myself. I feel you. No, I get it. I get it. Nah, I'm I'm pretty pretty. Yeah, I was raised that way. Like, I don't think a girl should pick up a check. And it's not like a condescending thing. It's more of just a like people are talking about like now people go on dates, right? If they meet on these dating websites or whatever it is. And they're like, yeah. I'm the guy makes dating. me I know you point at me. I'm not on any <laughs> no, dating websites, no, just so you know. No, I'm not, pay- I'm not pointing on you because you're on the dating. I'm just saying that people will go on dates and they're like, yeah, the guy makes me split the bill or something like that. You hear stories like that. And I'm just Imagine saying, the yeah. balls it takes. Like, what are you talking about? Imagine- I would rather pick up the whole tab and him just let it happen than to say, let's split it. Uh, same. Imagine the balls it takes to ha- have a nice date, anticipate getting some pussy that night, check comes and he goes, do you mind splitting the bill? Yeah, the pussy dries yeah, up. Yeah, but they so don't fast. say, do you mind, from what I understand. I think the guys nowadays are like, oh, so yeah, where you have your card or whatever. Like, I don't know. I've never, I've never, <laughs> so I've never said it. I don't know. That's he actually crazy. had a girl that wanted to spoil him. I was trying to set him up with and this. She's beautiful. And he did not. He was like, I want a man's girl who's going to take care of me and spoil me. Like, where are these at? And I said, I got you. Yeah, but I once it happens, up, the ego. Is, I know. I set him up with one, and he just didn't even know how to fucking act. I didn't he was like, "Dude, she tried. Like she tried You're to like, pick up yeah. the tab, and I had to stop and like overpay. And she tried to buy me this, and I had to pay. And I was like, every time a girl pays for me, my dick gets smaller. That's like what happened. That's it. The girl. He said he wanted every it. Every time I, I yeah, did. Until I you realize, realize, realize. I didn't realize. I didn't realize. And I still want it. You know, I'm learning. I'm learning. <laughs> you know, I'm gonna work on it, ladies. Yeah. If you're listening, I will let you pay for the bill. They're just gonna some of the bills. I'm gonna pay. You just tell me. To just Put go down on her you know, after. Just, Be yeah. like, look, it's a reciprocation. You He's pay a cheap the bill. date too because you can't take him anywhere. You can't go out the country right now. So it's like. <laughs> it's tough, bro. Like she set me up with this girl, right? Beautiful girl, tons of money. And the girl only wanted to spend money on me. Take me shopping, buy me everything, all this. Like everything that I say, like I want. And I do wanted want him it. to have sex with other girls. Yeah, like, she used to force have, me to sleep with other girls. I could not have set him up with a better situation. What, what, what was, what, what, she just wanted to be with you? I guess, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm, an, I'm a nice to guy to be around. Find me one of those. No, yeah, you're I, not bad. I got him, but he just dropped <laughs> me. The ball. It, it was hard. It was hard. So the check comes for our first dinner, right? Obviously, the waitress is leaning to hand me the bill. I'm supposed to put my hands in my pocket and look at my date like you're gonna get that. Like, nah, man. I'm t- I took so the check. So awkward as a man. Yeah, I it's just so weird. Like, it's weird. Like, uh, it's just crazy. I'm yeah. not sure. I got a limitless. I got multiple limitless Amexes. I'm not worried about the you check. You learn from the best. You just look at her and say, "Hey, thank you. <laughs> thank you for." The- well, one check. time, one time, her ex, right? Her ex and her ex's best friend. I had to go. I have a rapper homie comes to town. He goes, "Yo, let's link. Let's get some brunch." I'm like, "Cool." I invite her. She invites him. Who invites him? 
right? So now you got a lot of plus ones. Yes. Yeah, so, with right. penises. Yeah, exactly. Right? Is that your boyfriend's boyfriend? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. 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 That's crazy. So, right. So we go, we go to this nice spot for brunch. All of us are there. Mind you, there's zero people that I'm going to be able to have sex with after this, right? It's, it's her who I don't have sex with. Her boyfriend, her boyfriend's you boyfriend. Have sex with him. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we go to finish eating. The check hasn't even came yet. Like it's not even a relevant part of the meal. And the two boyfriend and the boyfriend's boyfriend look at me and they go, "Thanks for brunch, Mickey." I would have pulled my pants down. <laughs> been like, start sucking. Yeah. Wait, I don't get it. Though. They were like, that, they just knew. What that kind I was of standard is that? I would have been yeah. like, I'd have been like, I left my wallet at home. Yeah, what would they have done then? I know what they would have done. I would have said thanks for what? Turn to you. Should have put her card. <laughs> I would have said thanks for what? what Sweetie. <laughs> I should have, but I'm like, no, I'm like you know, I'm for me, like, it's more about like, I like to sometimes bring that awkward tension in the room just to see how people act. Because to me, I'm like, yo, what are you doing, bro? Are you feeling all right? Like, what is this nonsense? But you know what I mean? Yeah, it's nonsense. I like to sometimes, because like, I just want to see how people act in those kind of situations. But you're already ready. You don't even have to see how they act. You already yeah, know what time you I know, I know. So I was like, whatever the bill is, I don't know. But kidding. I like that too. I like when a guy literally cucks himself in front of me and I'm like, ah, I got the check. I'm like, you fucking know. Brandy, so, do you have anything you want to plug? Anything I want to plug? Yeah, plug anything and everything of your- Her butt. What? <laughs> what <are you> guys? <laughs> no, because that's the clip right there. <laughs> like what? No, because I'm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What I'm like? Is plug? there anything I want to plug? What does that mean? No, like, like, uh, my like Instagram, Instagram, or Instagram. Or like, oh, like, like, I was like, what are you guys talking about? I'm I like, you guys, I she, yo, you guys. Wait, do I just sound like your ex boyfriend? Is there anything you want to plug in me? Like four, <laughs> I, yo, sometimes there's speechless. so many conversations happening at the same time. I don't know what's happening. You guys were talking about soup like like two minutes ago. I think everyone knew what each other meant except for the clean cut boy over here that doesn't. Like, what are they plug me? Listen, I'm fine. I'm, I'm fine. I, I'm fine being the villager here. It's okay. No um, problem. I don't know. All my socials, I guess. Everything you can find me on is just Brandy with I, letter V, Andrews. Um, and that's me everywhere. So it's pretty easy. Sick. Well, Mickey, they all know Mickey's shit. Amazing. Sweet. Like, anything Thanks. else they, recently? Any work going on? Because you've been running around hustling. You have anything? I told you, you that I'm funding all my fans gambling. I told you that. Yeah. Yes. By the way, everybody keeps asking, but you're not clear about where to go to sign up for all these things. It, on purpose. We had way too many increase, way too many submissions that we're still going through it. Because so people are writing in comments saying, "Make where, where, where." And they have to, to follow my Instagram. Every so often, I'll post one link and I'll say what. It, like I'll say, it's not like hidden. It's not right. like subliminal. I'll be like, "This is the link. Hit it now. If you don't hit in 24 hours, the link's gone." And Catch you next time.